24 hours after Bola Tinubu was chosen as the presidential candidate of the governing All Progressives Congress, attention now shifts to his possible pick for running mate. Joining us now for more uh, Arise analysts, Ruben Abati and Sam Amadi. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the news tonight, gentlemen. First off, let's just start with what played out um, yesterday um, at the APC primaries. What do you make of the whole process? And what do you think is going to play out next in terms of Tinubu's running mate, going by the speech that he gave? Dr. Bati. Okay. Well, the uh, choice of the uh, uh, standard bearer and presidential candidate of any political party, 18 of them in this process, who seem to be the first leg and the most important of that leg. And we have seen in a number of the parties, particularly in the two uh, dominant, uh, if you like, predominant uh, political parties, the All Progressive Congress and the People's Democratic uh, Party, PDP, uh, this process being completed. Now the uh, APC, uh, you know, there were a lot of, un there were many uncertainties, propaganda, speculations about how that process would turn out. There were even hitches, glitches, some people would say, at a point when the process was invaded by persons who had not been accredited, either as agents or as uh, delegates at that event. But by 5 a.m., uh, you know, the organizers of the APC convention were able to uh, stabilize, and at the end of the day, it came across as an open, transparent, and, uh, you know, uh, relatively uh, well-organized process, leading to the emergence of Ashua Jubola Ahmed Tunumbu as the uh, standard bearer of that uh, political party. Ashua Jubola Ahmed Tunumbu himself, in, uh, in his uh, acceptance speech, said he didn't expect to win. Because two weeks earlier, according to him, he thought that there would be the obituary of the party. And of course, he was full of gratitude. He delivered a message of hope and also of change and also of his capacity as a person of serious purpose, as he had described himself earlier in his, uh, uh, you know, uh, in his delivery of his own manifesto, that he would lead uh, the party forward and ensure victory. And he was specific on some of the things uh, that he will be able to do in terms of insecurity in the country, the menace of terrorism, and also, of course, he, had, he didn't have uh, extremely, I use that word advisedly, kind words for those who challenged him. And we've had all of that uh, out there in the public domain. But that's the first leg, the most important leg. Now that Ashwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu has taken uh, uh, that step forward and it was given the flag, which uh, uh, the PDP spokesperson, Debo Lugmuagba, says uh, refused to unfold. That is not true. I saw that, uh, you know, on television. The flag uh, was uh, properly held together by uh, President Buhari, uh, the chairman of the party, Abdullah uh, Adamo, so Senator, Dr. Thank you so much and also, for setting the stage also um, at this point. Let's bring in um, Dr. Amadi here. What is next? Who do you think he's going to pick as his second in command? Well, uh, thank you. The, the process is always uh, a collegial one. Uh, they started it off now with meeting with the governors and meeting with the NWC. So that will be consultations and consultations. And of course, the timeline is at the seventh of this month. I, I think two factors will weigh strongly. One will be the where he can get more votes. So essentially, my eyes are always on the governors, the governors of maybe the Northwest and Northeast. Northwest delivered for him big, big, bigly, and then Northeast. So that would be that kind of concentration. The region where votes are going to be more competitive. So probably I see him looking for a governor uh, who is in one of those big states. Say, take for example, Kano. Take for example, Bronu, where of course people like Zulu, a star in the party, is looked upon. Or people like uh, the, the, the Simeon Lalong, also from Plateau, who earlier supported uh, uh, Amechi, but it's also an influential uh, leader of the Northern Governors that turned, one would say, the tide for him. The second issue that's going to be that's very essential here is religion. Essentially, some of the party uh, think tank or some of the gurus are talking about harnessing, you know, the, the symbolism and enthusiasm that religion creates in north of Nigeria, particularly the northwest and northeast. Uh, so that's going to be a very tricky one. So he probably will fancy a Muslim-Muslim ticket. But that ticket will be problematic in many ways. First, 
Khan has been very upfront that they want a Muslim Christian, Christian Muslim, because of the diversity and sensitivity to religion and uh, ethnicity. And again, with all the issues around terror attack, you know, this is, is front and center. The other issue is how it will play out in the south part of Nigeria. This is, uh, Shuaju fancies himself as someone who can close down the deal in the south. He has the southwest as his base, the south, south, and south is where PDP is predominant. So he would like to be competitive in those states as well, those rooms as well. So a Muslim Muslim ticket would be a, a problematic one for him. In the north central, where Jonathan lost in 2015, that would be a problem. So I, I see him probably going for caution taking the Christian Muslim, and the boss Mustafa would be very strong on that, a very fine technocrat, somebody who has smooth operator, who can backstop a president like a Shuaju, who will be top on ideas, but may not have the energy for detailed work. Boss would be a great guy. Simon Lalong has been strong in the party, and of course comes with a sense of discipline. In the northern part, somebody like Badaru, a fine technocrat, you know, was influential in this administration as well as a governor, uh, a KB governor himself, Bagudu, who is a close friend, then, don't forget, his other friends were not governors who are very close to him, especially Kazim. So, essentially, he's, he's spoiled for choices. Yeah, but on the this front is very page this of like our sister publication already. Uh, but let me bring in Dr. Bati back into the conversation. Dr. Bati, uh, Ashwaj Balatinibu is a Muslim from the South where Shouldn't it be as simple as choosing a uh, Christian from the North? And let's look at some of those names. Uh, Atiku Bagudu. Erufai, governors of Kebi and Kaduna State. Will those make the cut for a Tinubu vice president? Okay, the only reason why anyone is talking about a Muslim Muslim ticket, which was something that was first proposed uh, in Nigeria in the 1993 elections, when we had uh, uh, the late uh, Bashonu M. Abiola uh, running uh, on the same ticket with uh, Babagana Kingibe. It worked at that time. And they went ahead to win the election. But the Nigeria of that time is different from the Nigeria of today. We've had more divisions along the centrifugal forces of religion and ethnicity in this country. The question to ask is, will it work now? Mm. Second, when uh, in 2014, uh, with uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari uh, being the candidate of the uh, APC that emerged at the time, the issue of uh, you know, religion was also uh, on the front burner. And uh, Ashwaju uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu was, we were told, supposed to be the, uh, you know, the running mate to the president. But that didn't fly. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, according to the accounts by Chief Bisi Akonde and others, and uh, Ashwaju Bola Tinubu himself, Ashwaju Bola Tinubu was asked to choose a Christian of his own choice. He was given the privilege to do so. He could have chosen as we have been told, uh, 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 Kadozo, he could have chosen Wale Edun, he could have chosen Pao Sakin Yelure, he could have chosen Chief Shegun Oshoba, but he chose uh, the uh, present Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. Now, this time around, we're now being told that, you know, some analysts are saying the best thing for uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu is to choose a Muslim to counter the considerable uh, impact that uh, the other party having chosen another Muslim could have. And that choosing a northern Christian could be an issue. Now, would Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu do that? Will he have the courage to propose to Nigerians a Muslim Muslim ticket this time around? And that was the issue that came up at the convention of the party when we were told that uh, a message was going around. Immediately, uh, the campaign uh, organization of Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu denied that that is the plan, that, you know, he's not thinking in that regard. But we're told that consultations are, going, are ongoing. Uh, well, should, uh, uh, you know, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu then decide to be courageous, to dare the devil mm -hmm. and choose a Muslim, uh, you know, running mate? I think the shortlist, as we have seen uh, around, will be Nasir Rufai, mm -hmm. uh, who has been, uh, you know, one of those flag bearers for a southern presidency, one of even the major voice uh, for you know a southern presidency. So there's an IOU there. Mm -hmm. Another person will be uh, Atiku Bagudu, the chairman of the election uh, uh, committee, uh, who was also you know uh, who has been very prominent uh, in the entire uh, uh, process. And then of course you have Abdullahi Ganduje, 
who has been following the uh, governor of uh, Kano State, who has been following uh, uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tunumbu from Oshun State to Abelkuta, where that uh, famous uh, statement was made. You know, and then you have Kashim Ibrahim Imam, who was identified by this day newspaper today. Kashim Imam Ibrahim, you know, what he brings to the table is that he's uh, amphibious, ambidextrous, you know, in the sense that although he's from uh, Bonu State, uh, he's schooled in Lagos. He's a product of uh, King's College. Mm -hmm. So he's, in one regard, a Yoruba uh, man. Don't let me call him a boy, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> and he has extensive network, you know, within the South, either among the Yorubas or among uh, the Southeasterners. And he's a very good friend of Ashua Jubola Ahmed Tinubu. And, you know, if you tick some of the relevant boxes in terms of who a vice president should be, he will fit in. Then you have Baba Gana, uh, you have uh, uh, Governor Zulum, of uh, uh, Boronu State. State, who has said very categorically that he's not interested in being anybody's uh, running mate. He just wants to be, you know, governor of uh, Boronu State. But then, with regard to Ibrahim Kashim Imam and Baba Ghana Zulum, the question will be, okay, would the Fulani stock allow or accept a Kanuri? Considering the historical, you know, uh, politics between the Kanuris and the uh, Fu uh, Fube, you know, uh, within uh, the uh, politics of majorities and ni minorities uh, within Nigeria. But then, of course, we're told that Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu may then decide to choose a Christian, to, to just follow the pattern. And the two shortlisted persons, uh, in some of the accounts, in my view, include the uh, former speaker of the House of Reps, uh, Honorable Dogara. Uh, but Honorable Dogara, yes, he's a decent man, but uh, he's from a minority group in uh, Bauchi State. He doesn't have the numbers. Mm -hmm. The man um, who will be VP must have the numbers. Let me, let's bring in um, Dr. Um, Amadi at this um, point. There's a statement um, Dr. Abati mentioned earlier and talking about, you know, will Bola Ahmed Tinubu go ahead to pick a Muslim as his running mate? Uh, was it a case of him not caring whose ox is God at this time? I'm just going to put this question out to you. Do you think it is wise for any party to pick a Muslim running mate going by what's been playing out across the country? It seems that whole religious difference, you know, amongst Nigerians has really come to the fore in the past few months. What is your take, Dr. Amadi? I think it would be unwise and supremely so. Let's step back and look at uh, the scenario in 1993, 2014. In fact, arguably, when President Buhari refused to pick a Muslim Muslim, Nigeria was better in terms of religious unity. This is the worst time in Nigeria's history of conflagration, of religion being politicized. And so, if I show you not just win the election, but also governing and the legitimacy to govern, it's arguable that this uh, election may be very historical and determinative in terms of how Nigerians move together as a country. So get the country to survive. And Tinubu spoke about that is acceptance speech, talking about unity, the need for unity and respect for each other. So I think first that even the idea of stopping Atiku's momentum in the Northwest and Northeast uh, because of picking a Muslim, might backfire if you think about the loss that he will incur in North Central, which is where you have a large Christian community facing real challenge around supposed religious violence in the Northeast, the, the, sorry, Southeast, Southwest, and South South. So I, I think it would be a, a very unwise gambit, even though it might look courageous. Uh, let's not forget that in Kaduna State, uh, Governor Rufai did that with a Muslim Muslim ticket for governor, but that's really localized. And the, the, the consequence, even though Christians not in Kaduna felt bad about it, but one can argue they didn't have much, to, and that, that may be part of why we have this unnecessary conflict. So I think, look, the basic thing for Nigerian president in 2023 is someone who can unify the country. And the basic framework for unifying the country is to take away the religious conflicts. And doing that is to create a ticket that can speak to that common interest, common destiny. And I think Ashwaj is wise enough, and his profile in Lagos State as a governor who govern with not, not just Yorubas or Christians or Muslims, but entire country. Some Igbos were in that cabinet. Provide, shows him as somebody who understands the importance of diversity of uniting people. And therefore, I don't think he'll walk that path. It looks attractive. It looks courageous. It can make headline, but it's going to be consequential in terms of the votes and in terms of legitimacy to govern and effectiveness post-election. This is a country that's crying for salvation, and we can't try that. 
Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed, hope they don't go numb, and thank you for this conversation that really continues uh, up until before the election. We have to thank you very much, Dr. Ruben Abati and Dr. Sam Amadi for being on the news with us tonight. Much appreciated.